Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Billy True and welcome to the Valentine's Day special. Because uh, if you've been around a bit longer, you may know this is a bit of an annual tradition for us. Every Valentine's Day, I go out and I find a truly special dating simulator, which this year has brought me to England Exchange, a game about an American student coming to the UK to meet some sexy, sexy, hunky boys and possibly some hunky girls too. As I understand it, the game is perfectly open to that, so we'll make our decision as we flip and go there. But in general, I am looking forward to this one, alright? Bring on the English stereotypes. Bring on the ridiculous regional accents. Oh, this is going to be brilliant. Oh, there I am. That's me, sexy American John, right there, saying goodbye to my friends in an American bar. You can tell it's an American bar because the walls are literally decorated with stars and stripes. I truly hope that's intentional because if so, oh, this game's going to be amazing. I just flipping love it. We clinked our glasses together. Of course, Jin Su was the only one old enough to drink. Nina and I couldn't even walk into most bars. Ah, yes, of course. We're still in America, so I've not really got much experience drinking, because you guys in America, you're weird about alcohol. Like, you know, leave school, get a job, pay taxes, get married, have a child, all absolutely fine, but don't you dare have a glass of wine, you reprobate. The following day, I got off the aeroplane immediately feeling disorientated. Probably just the jet lag. Normally, America to UK are the red-eye flights, so uh, I'll give them. They've got the sky right. It's looking very grey. Immediately, England looking incredibly grey. Like that. That works right there. Though, okay, I'm sorry to nitpick, but that sign's really bothering me. Which is, obviously, if I've just got off the aeroplane, then I'm going to be in arrivals. Yet, the sign clearly indicates that various gates are in different directions, implying I'm in departures. Like, you don't arrive in an airport and immediately walk into an area where there's signs for more gates, because most people aren't going to be getting straight onto another plane, and we know we're supposed to be in arrivals, because baggage is actually signed ahead. Like, you wouldn't just... Never mind. All right, that sign's bugging me. Okay, another fine English observation here. It is apparently incredibly cold in January. Story checks out. It's cocking cold in January in this country. Anyway, off we go in a cab. On the wrong side of the road, no. We were driving on the left before you were even a cocking country, all right. Okay, so the reason I'm actually here is a work-study travel kind of program. The hostel provides my room and partial board, as well as a part-time job, from which they keep a share of pay. I don't know if that's actually a real thing American students can do. I've never heard of a program like that, but fine. Maybe this is something Americans can do. It was a cramped, quiet ride and didn't take long until we were surrounded by tall, older-looking buildings made of stone, which will not be pictured here, but they were definitely there. Different styles of architecture mingled with each other. Highly modernized buildings next to grandiose structures that look like they'd house nobility in their better days. Again, not pictured, but they were totally there. Hordes of Londoners with grim expressions push their way through the streets. Now that's accurate. The architecture's nonsense, but they've nailed Londoners there. Spot on. I had heard the British were more polite and well-mannered than us. Less likely to show their emotions, more intelligent, better in every way, basically. Again, true, well-observed game. The cab driver got out and grabbed my bags, but not before pointing to a machine on the back of the seat in front of me to run my cards through. I swiped one. Approval denied. What? Maybe that card doesn't work here. Trying to quell my rising panic, I grabbed another card and ran it through. Card read error! You've got to be kidding me. I didn't have any other cards. Well, please tell me you, like, changed some cash before you came to another cocking country. The cabbie was standing outside the hostel with my bags uh, tapping a foot impatiently. I crawled out of the car and dug through my carry-on. Trembling, I held out four $20 bills. American bills. What? I can't accept foreign currency. I'm sorry, but my cards aren't working. Did you not tell your bank you were going out of the country? Is that something you- Oh god, I'm playing as an idiot. Good. I didn't think to actually, you know, check what I was supposed to do before moving to another country for six months, American John. Oh, thankfully, I suspect a hunky hunky boy is about to come and help me. Oh, there he is! We got hunky boy number one! Okay, time to figure out if this is a hunky boy that's in contention for American John's love. Hand me your dollars, I'll cover your fare. I almost read that as I'll cover your face, but no, he's offering to cover the fare, which is much more appropriate and less weird. 
Fine, as long as someone pays her, I don't care who. I'd love to think this guy now completely rips me off, because I'm working into the assumption, having not bothered to change my money or tell my bank I was going abroad, I will have no idea what the exchange rate is. So, the cabbie only wants like 20 quid. This guy's gonna take my $80 off me, pay the fare, and then just pocket the difference. Alright, this guy's got a plan. He's a smart cookie. I'm Danny, by the way. You must be one of our new arrivals. And yes, I'm John. Lovely to meet you, hunky hunky boy number one. The front room was a small kind of entryway, with two doors leading out on either side of me and a staircase leading out of sight. The walls uh, were not as clean as I would have liked. Okay, story checks out. There is clearly a stain on the wall in the background there. What appears to be blood, potentially. So I don't know, maybe this story's going to an exciting, sexy murder mystery place yet. Let's see here. John, John, he, well, looks like you've been assigned to work as a maid. Excellent. And all the rest of your board and lodging seems to be sorted. Okay, things are going a bit more smoothly. Good, good, good. House rules, here we go. There are seven of us at the moment who board here regularly and a couple of extra rooms for overnight and short-term lets, but they're not used often. Okay, I'm guessing that's seven hunky hunky guys and or girls. Gotcha. Ooh, but before he could continue, a rather scruffy man came in through the front door behind me. Okay, mysterious silent man with creepy beard. If that is blood in the background, I think this is the guy that did it. He looked from me to Danny, nodded, and started climbing the stairs up. That's James. He doesn't like having much to do with us, to be honest, so give him his space. Try not to get on his bad side. I nodded. So, what is there to do that's fun around here? Anything in particular I should see or do? Go on, give me the details. He put his hand to his chin. Well, what do you want to do? What do you want to get out of this trip? Sexy, sexy boys, Danny. Sexy, sexy boys. Just undo two more buttons and we'll be halfway there. I guess you could check out the stereotypical landmarks, the monument, the eye, Big Ben of... Sorry, did you... S did you start with monument? The monument of the Great Fire of London by Monument Station. Who goes and sees that? Nobody goes and sees that. It's like, it's well out of the way. Like, maybe if you were going down to see Tower Bridge, you might be close by to it. But it's a very long way away from most things. Like, uh, yeah, if you were going to visit Shakespeare's Globe, it's a bit further around from that. So, uh, who on earth goes to see Monument? No one goes to see Monument. Why would that be first? And no mention of the British Museum, Danny. For shame. Oh, and I have a football, soccer to you, team here that I run with the school. Ah, oh, Danny, it's kind of you to translate. Also, we've now confirmed that American John didn't do sports while she was a teenager. We've established outside she's dim as a box of hammers. We know from her friends she wasn't a particular rebel who, like, you know, drank or smoked or anything while she was a teenager. I'm worried my protagonist may be the world's blandest human. Suddenly, there was a distant, dull thudding noise. Oh no, James has killed again. Then the door to my right flew open. Oh, here comes Angelo. And a short, sullen young man entered the room and stood there, staring at me. Who are you? This is your new partner, John. You'll be working together, remember? Okay, so this guy also works as like a cleaner wherever we're cleaning. Oh, you. All right, I don't like you either, Angelo. Okay, I'm very much putting you below Danny in the hunky boy state. All right, be very careful or I'll be completely ignoring your subplots. Angelo is one of our maids. I'm not a maid, I'm a housekeeper. Look, it's not normal for me to be doing this kind of work. It was a misunderstanding. They thought my name was Angela, not Angelo. So they assigned me as if I was a woman. Okay, Angelo, you can go in the bin. In the bin with you, goodbye. I held my hand out for him to shake, and he looked at it as if it were dirty. Yep, in the bin, right to the bottom of the bin. Ah, and Danny finally gives us a proper introduction to himself, so he's a biology student and overall bang-up guy. Okay, the fact that he chose to describe himself as a bang-up guy means he's going down in my affection, might be a bit of a vain asshole, but he's still well ahead of Angelo, so... Yeah, number one for now, but watch yourself, all right? Yeah, over-exuberant expression of joy. That's... that's not very British, Danny. We don't do joy. Also, when he says I'm just someone who lives here for right now, I don't know whether he means, like, literally, as in he's living here right now, or figuratively, as in his life philosophy is to live for the moment, all right? I could do with a bit of clarification there. Is that the cocking millennium eye out of the window? 
Am I in a small dingy motel that's got a cocking view onto the Millennium Eye? Also, I like how the game specifically describes the carpet as faded when in the picture there's clearly no carpet. It's a wooden floor, but uh, marvellous. There we go. Everything's fine. I mean, it's true. It is colourful. Liking the red and white bed sheets. Those are nice. If you need me, I'm usually in my room or wandering around the hostel, or I'm not here at all. So if you can't find me, I'm probably gone. You can just ask someone else in that case. Everyone's pretty friendly. Mostly. A dark look crossed his face. Oh, oh, tragic backstory of some description. So I unzipped my suitcase and began to organise my wardrobe. What's this? I held up an extremely expensive pair of, uh, shall we say, uh, undergarments. How did this get in here? Who did this? Because it sure wasn't me who bought Jin Sua Neen. It had to be. My American friends, how could they? Somehow, they conspired to distract me and sneak something into my luggage, which I'm pretty sure is a crime, but okay. This is what they thought I needed as a going away present? I held it up to my nose and... Okay, right, you were suspicious that your two friends had put dirty used underwear into your... Okay, fine, you do you, American John. You go wherever you want with your assumptions. Boom! The door flew open. And... Ooh. Okay, we've got a diminutive girl with bright red hair. Okay, hunky hunky girl number one. Also, I'm guessing from the chain and the kicking the door open and whatever. Oh my goodness. Is this a skater girl? Have I met my Avril Lavigne? Hang on, she was Canadian. Okay, my British Avril Lavigne? She looked at me, and then at what I was holding in my hands. I threw it to the side of me, feeling my face turn red for reasons that aren't 100% clear. Like, she's female too. She probably also owns lingerie, but fine American John. Whatever, I didn't... Didn't what? Don't own a bra? I'm moderately confident you do, American John. What are you doing in my room, says Avril Lavigne. Your room? This is my room. Your room, but... She leaned out into the hallway, a confused look on her face. Excellent. She's just kicked down the door of the wrong room. Also, she's just got knob written on her top. <laughs> I hadn't noticed that a second ago. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they might be going for a Cockney accent with her. Right, marvellous. We can bring back the Marnie accent from Pokemon. This is brilliant. So sorry, totally my fault. I picked the wrong door. Two down from the end, they said, and I picked the wrong end. Bit daft to me, wouldn't you say? Yes, the Marnie voice is back. Okay, so this is Peggy, and she's a new arrival presumably today as well. Got it. Anyways, I'd better get out of your hair, right? You're clearly very busy. Mm. Oh, oh, she's giving you the sex eye right there. That's the sex eye. Get in there. Peggy has moved right to the top of my hunky hunky guys and or girls list. The following day, you in there. Get the hell up. Okay, James, you are going right to the... No, hang on. Okay, you're still above Angelo, but like only just. You've got to report for work today. You know that. Yes. I blinked at him. I'm James. I own this place. I run this program. I also occasionally spout exposition. That makes me your boss. You're going to be a maid at a nearby hotel. Find Angelo. Make sure you go together. Arcee will also be working with you. And aha. I assumed I was going to be working here at the hostel. But no. I work at a nearby hotel. Gotcha. For some reason, I felt like this hostel was less a friendly work environment and more about exploiting the labour of young, naive and stupid people like myself. Yes! Welcome to London! That's pretty much what 90% of it is. Good. Glad you've caught on nice and early, American John. I found my way down to the kitchen where the promised breakfast appeared to be nothing more than apples, milk, cereal and some sad looking toast. Oh, here comes the cocking American. Where's my stack of fluffy pancakes? Where's my waffles? Where's my bacon stuffed with waffles on top of a stack of pancakes? All right, nothing wrong with milk and cereals, American John. I have milk and cereals and a cup of tea for breakfast by choice. Not all of us get to do a full American breakfast every day. Oh, and even more shockingly, no butter packs, just a tub of spreadable margarine. Yes, because spread is superior to butter. Why do you want tiny, tiny bits of butter? It's massively inefficient in terms of packaging. And spreadable margarine is actually, you know, spreadable, as opposed to butter, which is just horribly clumpy. Even if you get it on warm toast, it just clumps. Spread is superior to butter. All right, welcome to Britain. We do things better here. 
According to the schedule, I still had an hour before my first shift of work actually started, which just made me wonder why James came and like banged on my door like half an hour ago, because I've had enough time to get up, get dressed, have breakfast, and I've still got an hour spare, which is just James just went around hammering on the door like two hours before I was due to begin work. I'm not 100% sure why, but uh, okay, fine, what have you. Okay, so, time to check out The Crafty Crown, the pub next door, where I'm guessing I'll be able to go and drink if I want to and meet a couple of people that work there going forward once we've met everyone. Diddly diddly dee. So, good London pub. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. That's, that's not, that's not a London pub. That's, that's all wrong. That's, that's way closer to an American diner than a London pub. That's, that's just not right. I hesitated in the doorway, unsure whether someone was supposed to seat me or if I should seat myself. Oh, bless you, American John. So, that's hunky hunky girl number two. Hello, how can I help? She paused in the middle of her sentence, glancing across the room, and... Oh! Okay, so... <laughs> I'm going to use my psychic powers to predict that this guy, the incredibly tall slab of beef, as the game puts it, with the American football on his chest, might just be an American. Right, okay. So, no, 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 no. I came to Britain to shack up with a hunky hunky British guy or girl. You can naff the flip off. Hi there, I'm random. No accent, he was- No! Americans have accents, American John! Americans don't just get to speak neutral cocking English. You guys, you're the ones with the accent. We invented this cocking language. You took it and started deciding that Arkansas should be pronounced Arkansas, though that was kind of the French fault. But in general, you ruined everything. You replaced the S's with something ludicrous. You took out all of the U's. For some reason, you don't believe the H in herb should be pronounced, which is just downright weird. You're the ones who were wrong, not us. You know, I could get you something if you wanted sometime. I'll work here. You do? Yeah, but I'm off duty right now. So there's only Ashley serving. He motioned to the bartender, and she frowned. She started cleaning a sparkling glass with a rag, as if there were a spot on it that only she could see. Ah, Ashley hates this guy. Right, so, do not trust him. He's a dick. An American dick, alright? He can just go. Right in the bin. Right above Angelo. Okay, so that's hunky guy number three. Ashley, hunky girl number two. Right, nothing major from her, just a quick meeting. Time to get onto the hotel and- Oh no. Bloody Angelo's gonna be here, isn't he? Passing through the glass doors into the front lobby, I was met with a gentle warmth that wiped away the January gloom. Marble floors gleamed underfoot, reflecting the chandeliers above, and the decorative plants appeared to be live, not plastic. A pretty but very bored-looking woman was manning the receptionist desk. I approached her. Bloody hell! Okay, um, just- no, you wouldn't get away with that as a receptionist. No, 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 just, just no. Okay, so uh, I'm guessing you're, uh, what was it, Arcee, the woman that James mentioned to me. So, oh no, is this hunky girl number three? Because if so, already no. Inappropriate workplace attire, unacceptable. And actually, Booby McGee, I'm here to work as a maid. I'm from the one hostel, I'm John. Oh, you. Yep, in the bin, in the bin, right between Brendan and Angelo. Unfortunately, I apparently don't know how to clean things. So, uh, is that my problem? She looked at me with disdain. You spoiled yanks think you deserve everything handed to you. You'll finish your shift in the presidential suite. That one requires a special key that's kept here in the front desk. So you need to come get me. The only other person who has access to that suite is the hotel owner. Make sure you come get me before your shift is over or I'll be livid. I don't like waiting for other people to finish their work just so I can leave. Okay, RC, not keen on you. Not keen on you in the slightest. Okay, so what do I actually need to do in this job precisely? So we clean things. I'll show you how to do it. After that, you'll be the one making beds and dusting and stuff. And why is that? I don't do women's work, I'll pick up dirty towels, clean the bathroom, and vacuum, alright? Okay, Angelo, bloody hell, I let you out of the bin for five minutes to get some fresh air and exercise, but you just had to ruin it, didn't you? Back in the bin you go! 
Okay, several minutes of cleaning rooms and Angelo being a dick later, time to go and get that presidential key card from RC. However, when I got to the front desk, RC was nowhere to be found. Finally, out of desperation, I went to knock on the door of the owner's office. Hopefully, someone will be in. Um, excuse me? Yes, who are you? Ah, Francesca, the owner. We've heard about you. I'm John. I'm a new employee. I need to get into the presidential suite, but I can't find RC to give me the key. She must be helping a guest with something. Fine, fine. I'll go up and unlock the door for you. The boss took the key card into the door and opened it up. There, now it's all right. There was just one problem. We'd forgotten to- uh-oh. Well, on the plus side, it wasn't really me that did that. In many ways, it was the hotel owner. So, we can't be in that much trouble. And, as the door swung open, we were given a grand view of the room's king-size bed. And the two people on- oh, it's gonna be Arcee. But who with? Who's Arcee going to be seducing? And, yeah, there's Arcee, right there. Interestingly showing- I think slightly less boob in her underwear than she was with the dress she was wearing earlier, but uh, okay, fine, what have you. Arcee, what are you doing with... Uh, the hotel owner glanced between her and the hotel guest, who were locked in an embrace on the bed. Luckily, they weren't completely naked, uh, I think. I was trying very hard not to look. Ooh, is that going to be Francesca's husband or something? Arcee. What? It's definitely not what you think, ma'am. There's a... I believe this is something we should discuss in my office. If you don't mind. Oh dear. Arcee's been having sex on company time in the presidential suite. Probably against the rules. I apologise for this disturbance, sir. We'll get out of your hair right away. Honestly, Francesca, I don't think he minded. I think he was probably pretty cool with it. Alright, Arcee's on her way to presumably not get fired. Because I'm guessing from now on she's going to be my mortal enemy. Oh yeah, mortal enemy. I swear to God I'll make you pay for this. Okay, so, Arcee's now got it the flip in for me. Okay, first need to grab a bit of food though. So we got Angelo, Peggy and Ashley. It would appear that Ashley, much like Arcee, just never flipping puts them away. Marvellous. So a platter of vegetables and noodles together with... Oh! Hunky guy number four! So, this must be Mark. Yeah, Danny mentioned him at some point. And... Uh, Okay, he's a bit of a ridiculous pretty boy. That hair is just too pretty for his own goods. Ah, here we go. Ashley wants to try and have a chat with Mark, suggesting he's a new arrival too. So, okay. What brings you here, Mark? And, uh, Mark frowned. Ah, exploration. Oh, that's nice. Are you at uni? Did your family send you here? I don't think that's important enough to spend time talking about. Okay, so, uh, he's a bit dramatic. Potentially, he tilted his head to the side and smiled. I don't like people prying into my past, if you don't mind. Okay, it wasn't James that did the murder. Mark did the murder. Mark's got a dark backstory. I think I should leave. Have a nice meal. Okay, so Mark's either the most dramatic shampoo commercial model, or possibly he's a vampire. He might be a vampire. Okay, following day, and we're starting to meet people multiple times, so I'm guessing we've met all of the hunky guys and girls. So, okay, let's do a quick update on the hunk ranking. So, in last place, we've got Angelo, then probably James, then Brendan, then Arcee, then Mark. Danny is in position two, though, you know, he's starting to challenge for the top spot because he's just brought me some extra toilet roll, which is very convenient. That's very, very useful indeed. And number one is Peggy, pretty much by default, because she appears to be sort of vaguely Cockney British Avril Lavigne. So by default, Peggy is the winner for now. But then again, kind of depends on what toilet paper Danny's just brought me. If it's terrible toilet paper, he goes down below Mark. If it's like really nice triple quilted, he might be starting to challenge Avril Lavigne for the number one spots. Also, I just responded to him bringing me toilet paper by asking to do what? Do you guys not have toilet paper in America? Never mind, just take something to the toilet, see if you can figure it out. Oh, hang on, Mark's apparently French. Sorry, I thought he was a vampire, but no, he's just French. Okay, so is he supposed to have a ridiculous French accent? Oh, marvelous. This just gets better and better. People are not so sensitive in France as they are here, ho ho ho. Yes, I was right to ho ho ho. He was laughing merrily. Ah, except tragically, the game confirms he doesn't sound French. So maybe I'll just keep him with the ridiculously dramatic vampire accent. 
you know, I'm usually by myself reading books in the library. Up in the philosophy section, you should come visit me sometime. Oh, Mark, you're giving me the eyebrow. Ah, oh, here's our girl, here's Avril Lavigne. Okay, so, I just finished dinner when Peggy sprinted into the dining room, and on seeing me, she lunged for my hands. John, I need your help. Oh, okay, Peggy, what's the problem? Danny is team tryouts today, football tryouts, and I want to try, but I don't want to go alone. Scared I'll make an idiot of myself, I am. Do you know what I mean? I know you're into sport and we're part of some teams back in the States. Why don't you go with me? Hang on, no, 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 no. I very specifically said earlier, when I was talking to Danny, I wasn't super into sports, didn't I? Okay, you know what? We're gonna do this, because Peggy and Danny are both towards the top of my date hunk list. So, uh, we're gonna go and do the football thing. That's great. Maybe we'll go hang out in the philosophy section of the library with Captain Drama. I feel like those three are the ones we're gonna be pursuing. So, we've headed to the park and rounded the corner, and a set of bleachers appeared, along with a ragtag group of people nearby, which is... Uh, not the most common thing in the world. Generally, if you just have, like, a kick around in the park, it's just, you know, as it is. Having actual stands there is not that common at all, but okay. Danny stood before them, hands on his hips. Next, we'll have a basic skirmish, so we're going to feel for how you work together. Skirmish? In football? That's a very odd phrasing. All right, Danny assigns us to a team. Peggy's in goal. I'm being a forward for whatever reason. Peggy seems enthusiastic, though. I like her attitude. She's up for anything. Like it. Also, liking Danny's summation of the rules of football, if you get near the ball, kick it. Otherwise, try not to get knocked down. Yep, that's... That's just about everything. Sure, let's go with that. So the skirmish happened, whatever that is. Is that like a friendly? Just like a kickabout? Well, I guess so. I don't know. Probably the most embarrassing thing I have ever done. I wasn't used to being bad at sports. I always had a knack for them, took to them easily, from track to swimming to basketball. Or so I thought. But soccer was something different. I wasn't as coordinated with my feet as I thought. The one time I got the ball and got a shot on goal, I hit Peggy smack in the face. Then her nose started bleeding and I volunteered to walk her to the bleachers and take care of her. Danny doubled over with laughter agreed. Danny, someone's just been hit pretty badly there. They're bleeding. You're being a dick. Mark just got promoted to position two in the Hunky League. Oh, plot twist! A new challenger approaches. Sorry, I thought we'd met everyone, but no. I was just in the park, chilling out on a day off, and a young Asian woman with short black hair and thick-rimmed glasses is standing over a canvas, muttering under her breath. Okay, what's going on here? Hello there, hunky hunky artist. She seemed frustrated about her painting. I tilted my head a bit to catch more of a glimpse of what she was working on. It was a stylized landscape of the park, I think. I tilted my head the other way. No, it was a realistic watercolor, wasn't it? What was she trying to do? Okay, if it's a realistic watercolor, you're gonna be able to tell John because it's realistic and it'll look like the thing it's supposed to look like. Curious, I got up and sidled over to her, hoping I didn't seem too creepy. That is a little bit presumptuous, just, you know, Walk over to her without saying hello. No, say hello. Don't just walk up behind her and stare at what she's doing. That's really weird. And it's possible she's going to be a massive bohemian stereotype. So, okay. Not 100% keen on that. She can definitely go, like, mid-table. Above the people I absolutely despise, but behind Mark, Danny, and Peggy. Okay, but on the plus side, she's not being a dick that I just walked up to her. She's actually invited my opinion without me saying hello. So, uh, I just wanted a better look. I was curious and, uh, yeah, she really wants to know what I think. It looks good. I'm a little... Uh, what are you trying for here, precisely? Wanted to capture the landscape as I see it. What does that mean from your perspective or... Well, yes, from my perspective, but not point of view, not specific location. Well, I mean, yes, a specific location, but also my perspective. Okay, I'm just going to get her and Mark together. I feel like they would have very happy, long, rambling, meaningless conversations. Okay, so this is Ji Hyo, and apparently she is not from these parts. Ah, Korean, my old friend from America. Fine, I recognize the accent from there. No idea what a Korean accent actually is, by the way, so I'm not even going to try. Good question, though. I've been here for like four or five days at this point. Why is this the first time I've run into you if you're staying at the same hostel as us? What's going on here? Why aren't you like, you know, hanging out with the rest of us? I've just been busy sketching, trying to scout the perfect location. 
Art never sleeps. Oh, she just said Art never sleeps. No, no. In the bin with you. Not as far down as Angelo, obviously. And, like, maybe uh, about the same level as Arce, all right? You can go in the bin with Arce. The following morning, we've got Relentless pounding on the door. Ooh. Either that's some form of drama, an inciting incident to the actual plot, or it's Peggy. It's one or the other. Turns out to be Peggy, together with Peggy's theme music and the word knob. <laughs> I just can't get over how she wanders around with knob written on her top. It's amazing. John, I need your help. Sign my petition, please. Oh, of course she's got a petition that needs signing. Oh, go on then, sure. We'll save the whales or the penguins or what have you. I want the university to commit to using more renewable energy sources. London completely ignores solar power because of the cramped roof space and poor weather. But we have big buildings and we can make it work. You know what, Peggy? I'm not opposed to this. This does not seem controversial at all. If it does work, it'll save the university some money. You go for it. I like your moxie. Oh, and no one else has signed it, and Peggy's sad. I will sign it, Peggy. Don't you flipping worry. And do you think you might do me another favour? Oh, she's blushing. Oh, I'm liking where this is going. Yes, 100%. Would you help me get signatures from everyone here? For some reason, I can't seem to sit anyone down long enough to talk to them. Oh, okay. So, uh, I'm guessing she, uh, she talks people's ears off a little bit. Oh, I like Peggy. Peggy's good. Yeah, go on. I'll do what I can. So all I need to do is get Angelo and Mark. She's going to handle everyone else. They're too nice to say no. Arcee is not too nice to say no. Arcee is a right piece of work, but if you say so, Peggy. Okay, Angelo and Mark. Mark's not going to be a problem. He's invited me to go hang out in the philosophy section with him. Angelo, we might have some problems there. Unfortunately, it only took a few minutes of explaining the purpose of the petition for Mark to point out every flaw in Peggy's plan, from funding, to the disruption that the construction would cause, to the fact that the university already had a carbon-neutral goal statement. Regardless, I admire her spunk. I shall sign. Okay, Mark's on board, got it. As for Angelo, this one's going to be more difficult. Do not tell me. I just don't want to hear any of her tree-hugging nonsense. Oh, Angelo, she's not doing any harm. I will sign because you asked nicely, but only so long as I never have to talk about it again. Okay, maybe you'd enjoy hanging out with Mark too. Alright, you're both very dramatic. Thank you so much again for your help, John. I'm glad you're willing to actually look at what's wrong with the world, instead of ignoring it like most everybody else. Oh, Peggy, you're welcome. You're my favourite hunky hunky girl. Time moves on, apparently sometimes I go and watch Danny's team play. He's apparently very, very good indeed. A great team captain, you're great at everything, I really admire you. Maybe a bit overly earnest there, John, but oh, it's the dark, tragic backstory. He wants murder to football. And then he shook his head. Don't say that. Hmm? Why not? He held up his hand and shook his head. I don't want to talk about it. Don't act like I'm a good person. I'm not. I don't deserve it. So don't say it. Oh, Danny, what dark, terrible thing happened in your past? I must know. I just changed out of my work uniform and sat down at my desk to write a letter to my mother when... Oh, it's Peggy. Here she comes. Oh, Cockney Levine, I love you. You're my favourite. So, uh, she's walking like a zombie. Peggy, what's wrong, Peggy? Would a hug help? She looked at me, tears filling her eyes. Oh, John, this world's full of heartless arseholes. We only think about themselves. Yes, game, it should be arseholes, not assholes. We're in England, remember? Uh-oh, you figured it out. Oh, cynical. Cynical, John. Dear, oh dear, that was not necessary. My petition. Oh, dear. I'm guessing she didn't get all 5,000 signatures. How many? Like 10, 12? She gave a heavy sniff, confirming my thoughts. And... Uh, Okay, maybe next time or give her a good hug. All right, I'm just going to give her a big old hug. I worked so hard. And I know you did, Peggy. No one would have worked as hard as you did. I like Peggy. I mean, okay, she's a bit much, but her heart's in the right place. She's got a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of passion. I like her. It's just not fair. And if I could... Oh, I think she's fallen asleep, Peggy. I glanced at her, she was fast asleep, mouth open on my pillow. Now I was looking at her, she had heavy bags under her eyes, her hair looked more frazzled than usual. When was the last time she slept? Oh, she cares so much about this stuff, she doesn't get enough sleep because she's so passionate about the stuff she cares about. 
Bless you, Peggy, bless you. It wasn't until late that night that Peggy opened her eyes again. What? Where am I? You fell asleep in my room, Peggy. Mid-sentence, might I add. So, seriously, what time is it? Oh, she's probably missed something else, like a volleyball or whatever it is she does. Ah, finally a confirmation here. She's a chemistry major, likes to study biology in her spare time. Ah, I wonder if she does that because she wants to hang out with Danny. Maybe there's a bit of a thing there. If so, we may need to murder Danny. And he may deserve it, because I'm pretty confident he's got a dark, terrifying backstory. Also, just FYI, if it were actually night and dark, and that's the Millennium Eye back there, then uh, it would be lit up at night. So, tut tut game, tut tut. Okay, it's February 14th, Valentine's Day, today. So, okay, what are we doing today for Valentine's Day? Do I get to choose who to hang out with? Because either Peggy, because I like her best, or Danny, because I'm curious who it was he murdered. Oh, here we go. There's a quiet knock at the door and I slid out of bed to answer it. Come on, Peggy. No, Ashley. I mean, she's probably in third place at this point, so I wouldn't say no to Booby McGee, to be honest. I mean, if the opportunity presented itself. Oh, she's even got me a present. Okay, that's nice. At that point, I realised she had a bag slung over her shoulder, filled with tiny packages. Ah, she's just getting something for everybody. Ashley's a good egg. She's lovely. And apparently it was a tiny bunny-eyed Harry Potter. Fascinating. Oh, I was just going back to my room to grab something, and evil Danny's here. The sinister music's playing. He's got bags under his eyes. He's doing the evil eyes. Uh, yep, dark. An expression I've never seen before. I'm pretty sure we have several times. It's the same expression he always has on his face when he's done something evil. Furious, but not in a blind rage. The eyes of a man plotting cold revenge. Oh, Danny, what have you done? What have you flipping done? Who did you murder? He saw me after a few seconds and smiled. Ooh, who was it? Who's dead? Ah, I think we're coming up on Arcee's revenge at work too. Someone reported a missing mobile after you and Angelo cleaned their rooms. Right, Arcee's now trying to actively get me in trouble for revenge. Gotcha. And naturally, Angelo's decided to take her flipping side. Well, obviously he would, because Angelo's a dick and belongs in the bin. Empty your pockets. He flipping demands. Whatever. So, uh-oh. Right. I've been flipping framed. Got it. Because I keep my uniform in a locker here. So she's planted the phone in my pocket. Okay. So, basically, Angelo, you're a dick for being suspicious of me. Arcee blatantly did it, and you should be aware of that, because you were literally there when she swore revenge. Oh, hang on. Angelo went straight across the hall to a pot of plant and shoved the phone in there. Okay, Angelo's got my back on this occasion, but Arcee's game is stepping up here. We need to do something about Arcee. Possibly, we could persuade Danny to murder her. Oh, here we go. I'm walking down the hall. It's the beginning of March, by the way. And I've heard a series of loud bangs coming from one of the rooms. Danny's room. Yes, the murder room. What is he doing in there? Maybe he still has the flipping body. We need to find it. Maybe it's James's wife. Could have been construction or repair. No, it's murder. It's blatantly murder. More thumps and thuds. As if he were beating something with his fists. He was probably just kicking a football around in his room or something. No, that's ridiculous, American John. Ooh, we're never going to find out, tragically. Oh, but better and better, the following day, Peggy's got a slightly mischievous smirk. I do enjoy a good smirk. Stephanie was on and on about how she had this horse back at the manor. Seriously, she said it like that. The manor and a saddle with diamonds on it. And we thought she was being right twat, as anyone probably would. Then her parents actually brought her horse round, and it really did have a diamond saddle. Teaching it at once, like you'd see on a handbag, right? Either diamonds or rhinestones, but her family was proper flush, so I think it was real diamonds. Totally bling. Oh, Flip, Arcee's had enough. No, Arcee, don't you flipping dare. Don't you dare say anything against Cockney Levine. I am sick of hearing about your sixth form. Do you think any of us care? We don't know these people. We will never know these people. We do not care about these people. Most of these stories aren't even interesting. Oh, go and put a sweater on, Arcee. 
And damn right, Ashley jumps in saying the diamond saddle was interesting. Screw you. Right, Arcee's done with this nonsense. Grabbing some noodles. Apparently we eat nothing but flipping noodles. It's always noodles. And off she goes. And Peggy does not care at all. Good for you, Peggy. Don't let the bastards get you down. Hey, John. Yes, Peggy. Am I annoying? No. You're not annoying. Well, okay. Um, a little, but I liked you anyway. I mean, that's probably true. And that's kind of sweet in its own way, but maybe she wouldn't take it the right way. I'm going to say a little, but I liked you anyway, all right? The things that make you annoying are also the things that make you my favourite character. You're great, Peggy. Never change. Screw them. Maybe they don't like it. You don't have to go around pleasing everybody. If you like the way you are, that's what's most important. Do you like yourself, Peggy? The answer is... Oh, oh dear. Maybe she's just so loud and rambunctious and busy because she's a little bit insecure. Oh, Peggy. Oh, Peggy, it's fine. I love you. Okay, cocking plot twist out of nowhere in late March. I was just visiting the library and Mark's just picked up a rose off the floor when I went over to him. Um, where did you get a rose from, Mark? Why are you blushing? What's going on here? It's... It is for you, John. He held out the rose. His trembling was magnified by the rose stem and it shuddered in the air, almost as if it was dancing. I took it just to stop its movement. Um, thank you? My acceptance of the rose seemed to give him some confidence because he stood up and then kneeled below me. What are you doing? What's happening? He cleared his throat, then held out his hand as if delivering a monologue to Yorick's skull. My dearest John, the star of my eyes. Oh god, no, stop, please stop. You are the sun in my day, the skip in my step, the peanut butter to my jelly. You are the cinnamon candle in winter. Mark, please, please stop. It wasn't just the bad non-poetry, it was how strange it sounded while he said it. Especially as he was literally in a library where you're supposed to shut the hell up. So everyone else will be able to hear this too, Mark. This is really weird. You are what gets me up in the morning, and what keeps me going. You have been overtaking my mind as of late. You have possessed me, body and soul. Alright, Anakin, chill the flip out. We've barely said like ten words to each other over the past few weeks. I've been ignoring the hell out of you, because I've been basically hanging out with nobody but Peggy and trying to figure out who Danny murdered. We do not know each other, alright? Leave the flip off. I would very much like to date you and try and make you as happy as you have unknowingly made me. No, denied, off you go, bye, in the bin. Oh, apparently I'm on to Danny at this point. I'm chasing him through the hotel. You can't avoid me forever, Danny. Who is it you've got in there? Whose corpse are you slowly hacking into small pieces? He stopped to look at me and shake his head. Then he disappeared into his room. We should really tell James about the suspicion of murder. Please talk to me. I'm not going to hurt you or anything. Yes, but he might be about to hurt you. Seriously, John, have witnesses. I don't bite and I haven't broken anyone's fingers in years. His voice was only slightly muffled by the door between us. You broke someone's fingers. Uh-oh. He suddenly got more interested in us the moment he learned that we've started breaking people's fingers. Okay, um, this relationship's going to a dark place. I'm not comfortable with this. Goodbye. Okay, he's willing to do this, but not here. Uh-oh. Okay, public places, John. Public places, let someone know where you're going first and when to expect you back, so they can call the police if you go missing. A cafe, that'll do. It'll be very difficult to murder me in a cafe. Here we go, the dark secret. I need to know his dark secrets. I guess I should have known you would piece it together. Maybe I even wanted you to. It's hard when no one around you knows. Sometimes... I could completely forget that it ever happened. Sometimes it's all I can think about. Everyone here smiles and laughs so easily. It's like they've never struggled. They've never been someone bad. Now is your chance to turn back. We can pretend this never happened. Oh, he's magnificent. This is great. This is even more dramatic than Mark is. He sighed. Don't say I didn't warn you. I won't bother asking that you think well of me after I tell you. Especially because I'm still... Some parts. I will never explain more than what I will say now. Okay, this better be something dramatic. Like, he better be responsible for a moderately well-known genocide or something. Because he is hyping this up to 11. 
I spent years in a young offenders institute. Top security. I won't tell you exactly when, or where, or why. It was all committed under a different name, and I will not tell you what my birth name is. Okay, so he did some juvenile crimes while he was like a young teenager. Okay, you seriously overhyped that. Then again, maybe not. What I did was bad enough. I was granted anonymity when I was released to prevent anyone from tracking me down to get revenge. Mary Bell Order, they call it. Okay, so possibly it was murder. Actually, he might have been doing a bit of murder. But I am not the same person I was. I have made vast improvements. I am safe to be around. I won't hurt other people. You don't need to worry about that. Though I understand if you don't trust me. Okay, so it sounds like it was definitely something violent. Maybe gang-related violence. Okay, either it doesn't bother me or wow, I can ask him, would you do it again? Would you do the murder or whatever it was a second time? Yes, I'm going to be massively tactless. No, I would not. Absolutely not. His face says he would. He smiled at me and drained his tea. Well, I think it's about time to get out of here. What do you think? Okay, Danny, let's, uh, let's just go and never speak of this again. Thanks for talking with me, John. I'm sure my secret is safe with you. I'm not sure why you'd assume that. Like, I've given no indication whatsoever I'm particularly good at keeping people's confidences, but possibly he meets as a veiled threat. I'm not sure. Oh, but there's more. I'm interested in you. Oh, he's gone straight into sexy eyes and blushing. Okay, this is not the time to say that. Just after you've told the girl you're interested in that actually you committed a murder or some form of crime so severe your name had to be changed for your own protection to stop people getting revenge on you. That's not the same afternoon you tell her that you want to go out on a date. Bad call. Okay, it's literally the next day, and Chad Washington over here, with his bloody perfect teeth, who I've barely spoken to, has just decided he's got a crush on me and wants to go on a date. No, 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 no. You can naff the flip off. No, nope, not interested. Goodbye. Much more about the Peggy. Maybe the Danny. We'll have to see. Dating a murderer might be fun. Instead of disappointment, he seemed perplexed. What do you mean you don't? Oh... Brendan, this is why I said no. You're a dick. I don't like you that way. But he shifted from foot to foot, then lifted a finger. You mean you just want more time to think about it, right? You're the kind of girl who doesn't like to rush into things. Brendan, no. In the bin with you. Right in the bin. Right to the bottom. Right to, yeah, that's right. Right next to Angelo. Goodbye. But I don't understand. This is the first time... Oh, Brendan, you massive, massive tool. Goodbye. Yes, whole new bin. We're going to buy a whole new bin. And we're going to write Brendan on it in big letters. And we're going to put him in it and toss it off the pier. We'll see how you feel about this in a few weeks. You will regret it. Oh, oh, that's a threat. Okay, I need to um stop making enemies, actually. Because... Danny, now I know his terrible secret, and he's a murderer, and I'm getting sort of murderer vibes off Brendan too, so might want to start just being polite to everybody, potentially. Ooh, I think the game's starting to actually make me, uh, yeah, make a choice here. Peggy or Danny? I mean, Danny's potentially a murderer. That's fun, but it's gotta be Peggy, and apparently everyone else I've already shut the flip down. Admittedly, I'm not sure why Ashley isn't an option. Maybe she just doesn't swing that way, so it's not an option, therefore. We're going for Peggy. All right, activate Cockney Levine. And thanks to my magic choice-making reality-altering powers, the moment I click that option, Peggy is right here. Probably here to have a conversation with me about how she's suddenly feeling very bisexual or something. You see, John, some of my mates have a band that I think I told you about before, called the Rattle Prams. They have a gig at a club tonight. I promised I'd go, so I was hoping you'd come with me. Please? All right, straight off to a gig with Peggy. Love it. Peggy, what kind of music is this? It's called Sludge, all right? I'm too old for this nonsense. So apparently it's Sludge music. Love it. No, Sludge Metal, a kind of heavy metal punk fusion. I'm not going to do it. That sounds kind of fun in its own way. If that's real, I might go and look it up. After the show was over, we took the tube back to the hotel. Peggy, 
I wanted to. What? <laughs> Okay, Peggy, Peggy can't hear me because of ringing ears. Marvellous. We might have to do this another night. I'll catch up with you next week. Okay, apparently we're just going to avoid each other for a cocky week. Right, fine, whatever. Also, she's going home to see her folks for spring break. Which isn't actually a thing in the UK, despite the fact she's supposed to be from... Never mind, I'm sure it's fine. I'll see you next week, Peggy. Assuming I haven't been merged in the meantime. Okay, well, I'm not dead, and Peggy's back from her entirely fictitious spring break, so that's good too. Okay, time to grab Peggy before she dives straight back into her ludicrously busy schedule. We need to talk, Peggy. Look, are you seeing anyone? And no. And would you like to be? Oh, she's being a little bit evasive. Oh, here we go. John, you! She set down her suitcases. I never really thought about you like that. I had no idea that you- Oh, that's- that's not a good start. That's- that's not a good start at all. I don't know how to feel either, Peggy, but I want this to happen, alright? You'll always be my number one knob. Okay, John's playing it cool here. This is good. I like you. I'd like to go on a date with you and see what happens. Let's not make this too much of a big dramatic thing. But yeah, crucial thing here. Are you actually into girls at all, Peggy? And, uh, I don't know, actually. I've never tried. Okay, she sounds vaguely open to the possibility. This is not a disaster, at least. Oh, my spidey senses are tingling. Things are going missing from the kitchen. Now, Arcee's already tried to pull that one off once with the mobile phone in the hotel. So, uh, I'm suspicious I'm being set up again. Because she is one, evil, two, hates me, and three, apparently incredibly unimaginative. Because I think she's trying the same con twice. But in the meantime, on the final day of March, me and Peggy have finally managed to get some free time. Problem with dating Peggy, she's so damn busy, it's very difficult to actually get a date in with her. Still, on the plus side, sounds like, yeah, she's got a really good idea for some form of... Wait, what? What's... What's happening? Have we just gone skydiving? What... What the hell just happened? What's... what's going on? Oh, we're... we're ice skating. Not the most traditional thing to do at the end of March, but, um... Okay, sure. I mean, I've got sympathy for people being terrible at ice skating. As Claire will be able to tell you, me and her went on an ice skating date many, many, many years ago. I was, um... I was not good at ice skating. I was not very good at ice skating. Like, um... At all. So yeah, I got sympathy for these two. So, a nice afternoon ice skating, then into coffee and snacks. Alright, this seems good to me. This is a positive, light, fluffy first date. This is nice. The question is, does she actually like me in any way romantically? Peggy kept giggling, but every time I asked her what she was giggling at, she rolled her eyes or looked away. On the next batch of giggles, I felt a bit annoyed. Stop it. What's so funny? What's going on, Peggy? And... Uh, no, no, it's hard to explain, you're just being you. I keep thinking, that's such a John thing to do. I glared at her, she giggled even more. So you think you know me, do you? Maybe. Well enough for this, at least. And, oh yes! I've got myself a little kiss, alright? Just a tiny, tiny peck on the lips, but... Good start, alright? This has not been a total disaster. So... Are we dating now? Is this a thing? Seems pretty okay to me. Is it okay for you? Yes. Boom. Got it sorted. Excellent. Now I just need to be not murdered by Danny. And speaking of Peggy, a few days later, have you seen my volleyball? More stuff is going missing. This is, uh, this is going somewhere. Stuff's going missing. Everyone's personal items uh, just keep going missing. And it's gonna be arsy, and she's gonna flipping frame me. But, last time it happened, Angelo had my back. Peggy has presumably got to have my back. Everyone else I've pretty much burnt bridges with, so that might not go so well. Yeah, the drama continues. Uh, Gio's paints have gone too. Three things have gone missing at this point. Frying pan, volleyball, and oil paints. Not very interesting items on their own, not very valuable or tied together by any obvious thread, except they were all important to their owners. When I made the announcement, I watched everyone carefully for a reaction. 
Arcee looks bored. Brendan glared. Understandable, really. He's possibly going to murder me. Danny started to fidget. Oh, that's suspicious. Mark began tapping out in the Hall of the Mountain King using his fork and glass. Yes, of course Mark did that. Okay, so Arcee didn't look suspicious at all. Danny might have just become my number one suspect, but why? I was up late one night when I heard a timid knock on the door. Who would be coming by my room this late? Well, Peggy. Obviously, it's going to be Peggy. Yes, Peggy. Okay, so what have we got here? I frowned. She sounded strange. And uh, come on in. Oh, it's sexy, Peggy. She's doing the sex eyes. Come on, John. We might be able to seal the deal. So, the door reveals Peggy draped against the doorframe, raised her eyebrows. Okay, read the signs here, John. You know where this is going. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I should never try to do sexy cockney again, but we're gonna go for it. Hello, John. Um, hello. Is everything okay? She left the doorway. <laughs> Slowly walking towards me in a weird way, sort of swaying like she was on a tightrope and trying to keep her balance. Was she drunk? Peggy, what's going on? Shush, I've come to make your fantasies come true. <laughs> Can't do it. This is, no, this is too much. The sexy cockney is too far. I've gone too far. I must be stopped. I stood up from my chair and she shoved me back onto the bed. Peggy, no, don't talk. You'll ruin the moment. To my surprise, she turned around and started dancing to absolutely no music whatsoever. Her movements were smooth, but lacked rhythm and... Was she trying to seduce... Yes, John! Yes, she's trying to seduce you! How are you not picking up what's going on right now? Peggy, you don't need to do this. Don't stop her, John! This is great! Oh, do I want to play along or reassure her? Okay... I mean, maybe this isn't really... Is this her, what we're seeing right now? Maybe I should reassure her. Like, she doesn't need to put on a big show for me. It's fine. Reassure her might be the better option here. Peggy, you don't have to play up a fantasy for me. Trust me, you're attractive enough already. Oh, that's a sweet thing to say. Well done, American John. Oh, she looked away from me, then slowly took off her clothes. I watched her slow, fumbling movement, my breath catching in my throat. Okay, we're okay for now. This is fine. Prepare the hedgehogs. I've got a bunch of them right here. So, are you ready? Yes, Cockney Levine, I am. I think I'll take you up on the offer. Yes, hedgehogs in three, two. In a way, it was great that she made such a production of our first time together. It was my first time too, and the fact she was so nervous ended up making me more relaxed. Okay, I think we're okay here. We don't need hedgehogs for this. Despite all the mishaps, we had a great time together that night. Okay, this is going well. I just need to avoid being framed and or murdered. No, never mind. We're just all going on a trip to the beach instead. Okay, we've got a bit of a game here. So, £600 a head, James is saying. Everyone needs to put in £600 for a big beach trip. And it needs to be on May the 5th. That's the only time. So, everyone puts down that amount by then. We can go cash by May the 2nd. Got it. So, that's about... I think we're mid-April right now. Admittedly, this is risky. Don't do a beach trip in the UK right at the beginning of May. There's as good a chance as any it will be bloody cold, cloudy, raining. That is very much not British summer. Okay, um, April 28th sort of came out of nowhere. I was going to die, I was definitely going to die. Are you ready to jump? No, I am not ready to jump. Right, so, okay, you certified for this. Of course I am. One of the first things I did when I turned 18, don't even worry about it. What? Are we actually doing a parachute jump right now? Well, there is a tandem instructor's chest being mentioned, so I guess so. If I didn't have goggles on, I wouldn't have been able to see the ground. So, um, okay, weren't we supposed to be, like, saving up for a beach trip just, like, a few days ago? Like, tandem parachute jumps can't be coming cheap. It took a bit for me to come back to reality after we landed. I kept replaying what had just happened in my mind, my brain trying to justify what had just happened. We weren't in the sky, it said. We were on an alien planet. Stupid brain. Were we doing virtual reality or was that just like a metaphor for lesbian sex? 
No, that was actually a real moving plane. Maybe? Okay, I've got to assume we did actually go skydiving despite the mention of the uh, alien planet for whatever reason. And also, Peggy is up for adrenaline high lesbian sex afterwards. So, uh, yes, 100%. Okay, May the 1st, we're almost at the deadline for the beach trip, and uh, my heart dropped. 400 pounds, not enough for the trip. Okay, where am I going to get 200 quid in a single day? Except, hang on, suddenly out of nowhere, Mark wants to give me the rest of the money. Okay, I feel a bit awkward about that, to be honest. Like, for starving students, especially those who don't really know each other that well, 200 quid's a lot. Do not tell the others I gave you this. Also... Do not ask where it came from. Oh, he's staring off into the distance. Possibly he's got a tragic backstory too. And then he smacked me lightly across the face with the money. What? This is... Well, where is this going? What's happening? Take it, my arm is getting tired from slapping you so much with the money. What's... What's... Ha just take it. Just take the money and never mention this weird evening again. Oh, the morning of the beach trip. Arcee says that James told her, you need to check the register. Okay, I'm guessing all the money's going to have gone missing, and it's going to be your fault, and you're going to try and frame it on me, together with the great frying pan theft. Something was jammed inside the drawer, stopping it from closing all the way. So, uh, what have we actually got here? Okay, don't know. Something was just, ah, she was getting my fingerprints on it. Gotcha. Right. Sneaky, RC. Sneaky. So we have gone on the trip, so yeah, things are going to go sideways when we get home. But, um, apparently on the first night, we met on the beach to light fireworks together. I'm not sure you're legally allowed to do that in the UK. You can set up fireworks in your own private backyard. I don't think you're allowed to take fireworks out in public. Not without a proper permit or something. I'm pretty sure that's against the law. And something I should watch out for... Arcee and Brendan are in a corner together. Right, they're in this together. Got it. Okay, we're back from the trip and... Uh, oh yeah, Arcee's springing her stupid trap. John, we know what you did. Perhaps you'd like to confess and come forward. If you could return the money, that'd be even better. We could act like nothing happened. Okay, so I'm being framed for a theft. Got it. You confess right now, there'll be no need for drastic measures. You could even stay in the hostel and keep your job. Really? If I admitted that I'd stolen everybody's stuff and a load of money off you, you'd let me stay and keep my job in the hotel where I'm allowed to go into guest rooms, largely unsupervised, where they're keeping their valuables. You'd let me do that because you're not the brightest tool in the shed there, James. And yes, indeed, I know you took money out of the hotel register, because I'm assuming, well, actually, how would she know how to check the fingerprints? Maybe there's like a security camera or something. So yeah, I've been set up by Arcee. It's not exactly a complicated setup. It was very, very obvious, but whatever. Apparently, I've forgotten to mention that, you know, I was asked to interfere with the register because Arcee told me so. I just can't be asked to mention that, so whatever. So, I've been fired from my job. No job, no rent deal, and I suppose actually that screws up my entire placement here. Except, weirdly, once again, he's willing to let me stay if I just pay rent. Despite the fact he thinks I'm a thief who steals the rent money, but... Okay, you know what? Fine, let's just go with it. Okay. Time to figure out whether anyone's going to be backing me here, because I've got a good feeling about Angelo and Peggy, but honestly, I've not really been, you know, dating, sexing, or paying much attention to anybody else, so they might not like me. Ashley, me and you have always got on fine. A handful of hurt faces turned to me. Ah, I'm guessing the other stuff just mysteriously showed up in my room. I really don't know what to make of this, John, says Danny. I'm disappointed I thought better of you. You burnt down an orphanage for stray nuns, you dick. All right, even if I was guilty, which I'm not, you have no cocking right to judge. Okay, on the plus side, Peggy didn't just confront me. So I'm guessing, yeah, Peggy trusts me. Good, except, oh no, she just slapped me, Peggy. How could you? You know I didn't do this. Okay, so, do I want to just let Peggy be? She's run off to her room, or do I want to check on her? Okay, 
just for the moment, let her be. We'll check on her later. Because clearly she's a bit upset and confused for the time being. Oh, good, it took her a couple of days, but American John has realised she could have been set up by Arcee. Marvellous. I know you hate me for some reason, but why? Because of the whole thing in the hotel, John. The thing that happened like the day after you arrived, where she whispered to you, I swear I'll have my revenge. Have you just forgotten about this? Okay, couple of days later, I've got my flipping act together here. I was fixing the register drawer because Arcee told me you said it was broken, had to fix it. If you didn't know the drawer was broken, how come Arcee did? Yeah, that's damn right, James. Look further back at the CCTV footage. I think you'll find the real culprits. Okay, some time has passed. Peggy, how are me and you doing at this point? So, uh, hi there, Peggy. So I stood, dusted my hands. How are you? I'm doing well, better than before. I had some time to think, you know. Okay, I like doing sad Cockney as well. Sad, slightly morose Cockney is not as fun as sexy Cockney, but it's still pretty good. I nodded. But what's all this? This is uh, a secret. I'm out in the garden. What am I doing? I'm not actually 100% sure. Oh, apparently I'm making a compost heap, which I'm doing as a romantic gesture because she's into the environment. This is the worst romantic gesture ever. Why can't you stop being a good person, yells Peggy. Oh, okay. She still likes me. She's only being mean to me because she really does like me. Good, 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 good. I hate you. Why are you making this so hard for me? I don't understand. I believe you. I believe you didn't do it. Don't make any sort of sense, but I believe you, all right? Okay, good. We're back in Peggy's good books. Kind of. Oh. Late one night, as in two in the morning, knock at the door. Oh, Peggy, let's get one more in before the end of this business. Oh, um, okay, no, it's Arcee. Why the bloody hell are you here? I don't like you. I'm here, and I'm gonna tell you a few things. So you can't judge me anymore, okay? But it's private. I wasn't gonna tell you, but now I am. So listen up. And go on, hear her out. Let's hear some drunk rambling. I have reasons that I'm like this. And those reasons are as follows. One, I am poor. Two, I am stupid. And three, this is all I've got going for me. She motioned down to her torso. Was she referring to her body? Ah, so uh, actually, yes. The reason she was with the guy at the beginning, she presumably works as an escort. Got it. She's literally running a side hustle in the hotel where she's the receptionist. I need money. Money. I need to survive in this world somehow. You know, I'll do what it takes. Okay, just hear her out. She might be about to confess to stealing. I don't want your pity. I just want your understanding. Do you understand? I nodded and she stood. Good. You know, in another life, maybe we could have been friends. Wouldn't that have been weird? Now then, good night. Okay, well, that, that was a fun little interlude. Okay, so having a bit of a goodbye dinner here, we're coming to the end of my time, and one thing seems off. Arcee, much quieter than she'd ever been in a group situation like this, watching the group with an almost sad look on her face. I would like everyone to be quiet. I have something to say. Back in May, after we came back from the trip to the beach, money was found missing from the register up in the front of the hostel. At the time, John was blamed for it, but it wasn't her I took the money. Well, that's... Okay, so that's that's the mystery resolved then. I was assuming we'd have to, like, you know, speak to the right people, pick the right options to solve the mystery. But no, Arcee's just basically stood up and said, by the way, it was me. I did it. And I would have got away with it too if it wasn't for my cocking self. Then she sat back down, picked up her fork and began eating spaghetti as if nothing had happened. Well, okay then, I guess I'm off the hook. John, you're the one who's been affected by this. What do you want to do about it? Kill her, Danny. Kill. Give in to your rage. Yep, I'm not the police. I'm not the landlord. I'm leaving tomorrow. It's up to James. He can deal with it. And of course, if it's my last night, presumably it's my last night with Peggy. For the time being too, given I'm going back to America. So don't disappear just yet. We've got a lot of goodbyes still to say. In my room... I'm going to miss doing the sexy Cockney accent when this is done. I'm going to miss it more than anything. 
John, you do not turn down sex with Courtney Levine when she makes the sex face at you. Get in her room and sex the hell out of her, alright? And here we go. It's time to go to Heathrow. It's time to head back to America. Hopefully, like, you know, Peggy did give me her number or email address or something. I'd spent months here studying, working, making friends, avoiding enemies. Now, it was time to leave. In the full summer sun, it's not really. It's, it's England. The beginning of June. Alright, you're lucky if you get sunlight at all. It is most definitely not the full summer sun. But the yard was still a lot brighter than it had been when I first arrived. But it was still a mess. James hadn't made anyone tend it recently. I made the short walk from the door to the taxi with my heart in my stomach and tears pricking my eyes. Hopefully at some point in the last six months, I'd bothered to call my bank to actually get my car set up. Otherwise, the airport's going to be very, very awkward. Again. My friend smiled and waved goodbye to me as I left. The taxi driver started the car up and off we went down the street. That was it. Goodbye, hostel. Goodbye, England. And goodbye, sex with Cockney Levine. As the car drove further, my sadness melted away, replaced with a sense of relief. Cocking hell! Right, you got over Avril nice and bloody fast then. Oh, hang the flip on. We've got ourselves a years later cut. Oh my. Oh flipping my. Am I going to be hanging out with Peggy? Yes! How much longer until we're at Leicester? Oh, I wasn't expecting Leicester to make a sudden appearance. Hooray for Leicester. That's where I'm from. I'm from the Midlands. Oh, brilliant. Leicester, wait. Why on earth would you be excited about going to Leicester? Have you been to Leicester? It's not really the sort of place you get excited about, to be honest, Peggy. And apparently in the intervening years, I've spent a lot of time in England. It's not that surprising that I'm picking up a bit of the accent. Oh my goodness, Peggy and I are travelling across England. Including to Leicester! Why? Why would you go to Leicester? And then of course we took a week out to visit the bustling metropolis of Loughborough. But of course, we couldn't leave before we spent a day seeing the natural beauty of Burton on Trent. She was a successful biochemical engineer with a lively voluntary position as some kind of public speaker for the Green Policies or something like that. It's called the Green Party, but whatever, sure. She went to community halls, to universities, to town centres, anywhere that would give her a podium really, and talked about recent advances in green science and technology. Once they were enchanted with visions of vibrant farms and forests, she told them all the ways they could be more green in their daily lives. Oh, it sounds like she's doing something that's really important to her. Good for her. And so England Exchange comes to an end, because despite the fact we just sort of drove off with a sense of relief, apparently we did like go back to England and make a thing of it with Peggy. And apparently we built a new life in England. Like she didn't really come to America, I just naffed off back to England. Because as the game did say at the beginning, English people are basically Americans, but superior in every way. So I'm glad that that moral message did bookend the entire game. Well done, game. Good flipper job. Right, so that's England Exchange. It was just as ludicrous as I was hoping. That's all I want out of a Valentine's Day game, all right? I want ludicrousness. I got ludicrousness. And I want the opportunity to do stupid accents. And I got the opportunity to do possibly the most stupid accents yet. Sexy and sad Cockney. That's... That's some good stuff. I need to find another excuse to do that. That's that's just brilliant. Right, England Exchange, link in the description below in case you're interested, because of course, you know, there's going to be all the other routes too for the other, what was it, like six or seven other people? Maybe James too, I'm not sure if you can seduce James. Also, I swear there was some form of like subplot about James's old friend who ran the bar that Ashley and Brendan worked in, but it never went anywhere for me because I never really bothered hanging out with Ashley or Brendan. Also, Brendan never actually tried to get his revenge, unless like he was a collaborator in the business with the money theft and then just sort of got away with it. I don't know. If you're interested in all those questions, link in the description below. You may well want to check this out for yourself. And of course, next year, I will do what I can to find an even more ridiculous dating simulator. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been England Exchange. Thank you very much, and goodbye. I've created a small problem in my road system, which is uh, it's literally impossible for anyone to ever go back into town. And this building shall be where we produce our zebras. And this much taller building next door is naturally where we produce the giraffes. Does anyone remember how the road system went? I think it was something like this.